Okay, so Louise's question is, Matt, what are your thoughts on soft synths? Um, I love them. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, my basic thoughts are, I personally... I reckon about... I don't know, three or four years ago, I feel like we got to a point where there's no reasonable way that you could say that a soft synth and a hardware synth sound better or worse than each other. Um, the Well, actually, you know, probably more than four or five years ago. It's been quite a while now, I feel, where the, where the way that people code soft synths and the computer power to run them has meant that you can get incredible sounds out of them. And I use them quite a lot. Um, for me personally, I have a real uh, stumbling block of of sound design creativity with using a mouse to patch stuff and design sounds with. Um, and that's almost certainly just because I kind of learnt my chops on hardware since. So like that's it's always been that way for me. And I can I can do stuff on a hardware synth way, way faster than I can on a on an equivalent software synth. And I just enjoy the tactile nature of like turning something this tiny little bit and going, oh actually that makes this huge difference in sound or patching something here. I I enjoy that process in sound design although like i just said my particular patch on here hasn't changed for about five years but i do turn the knobs occasionally um so like for me personally i enjoy the sound that i enjoy the the like sound creation part of doing it on hardware synths but i don't think that the software synths like per se sound any worse mm -hmm. and there are definitely elements of software synths that depending on what kind of thing you're doing sound better like i mean i still like if i want a you know kind of rip your face off down the middle synth sound i'll probably use serum rather than you know one of my modular synths just because i know i can get that like mm -hmm. thing quicker and probably better in serum than i can with the particular modules that i've got and there you know there are hardware synths that do that thing um, and hydrosynth in a way is kind of like that um but yeah they're, they're they're um they're just different things i would i would love there to be a um some kind of like haptic feedback ipad controller for software synths where you actually where like the screen kind of had little bobbles in it or something so that you could actually feel where stuff was mm -hmm. and edit stuff <clears throat> excuse me um, and even if there was like a touchscreen controller that somehow could immediately just map. Well, and yeah, I guess you can kind of do this by just dragging your software GUI onto a touchscreen. But you know what I mean? It's like it's that it's that fluidity of, of having some kind of touch control over a soft synth, mm -hmm. I think would be a total game changer for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in general, I think they're really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one I, I use Serum all the time still, even though it's a bit like old school now. Um, old school. <laughs> I use, <laughs> well, you know what I mean. It's like yeah. it's not the new kid on the yeah, block anymore. Yeah, it's established. Um, yeah. I love the things like I, I still think Absinthe has got amazing sounds in it. Mm -hmm. um, the other the, there's this one called Alto A A L T O, mm -hmm. And I forget who makes it now, but it's kind of like a Buchler inspired soft synth. Right. And I, I don't have any hardware that even approximates that kind of thing. So it's like a totally different um, territory. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I will say about that is that, again, for me personally, I really like dealing with audio. So I really like right. recording a synth and having it as an audio file and be able to move that audio file around. And for the way my brain works, there's a level of like committing to sound there that I really like. Mm -hmm. And if I do use soft synths, I'll quite often just commit the MIDI to audio anyway, because that seems to help me like move through the production a bit more rather than it's interesting, the isn't it? That whole that whatever sound. that psychological thing is when you see the MIDI notes on the screen, you're like, it's not real yet. And then yeah, you then you yeah. turn it into a sound. It's like it's my multi track, you know? Yeah, yeah totally. else. there's something else that you said that really stuck with me when Louise and I were in your studio. 
And I think we were talking about one year since or whatever, and I was like, oh, why don't you just get like rack modules or, or desktop modules? And I love what you're saying. That's like even the feel of the keyboard helps you think about each of your synths as like its own instrument. Um, and totally. this goes back to a fun story, just part of the the peeling the onion thing. I remember Neil McClellan, I went into whichever studio he was working in and he played me like this crazy, crazy kind of like acid synth bass line. And I was like, what the hell is that? And he was like, oh, Matt did that. And I was like, oh, so did he like sequence it? And he was like, no, he just played that on his left hand and then was like going like that with his right hand. And it was like some <laughs> really like crazy, crazy, crazy bass line. And I think that was the first time I'd actually seen like, oh, there's like, there's like techno and synths that you're meant to go like that with. Cause I'd always seen people going like that. And that's like, oh, you can, you can go like that. And I know people, some people think that's kind of dumb, but the, the way that you are able to kind of like really, I think, turn your high tech stuff into a performance instrument that you develop a relationship with as that instrument is very special. Um, I, yeah, and I, I think, I think instrument design is the, it's, it's one again one of these other things that just really fascinates me um i think it's is it is that what industrial design is is that like the design of like um, stuff product sure. desi design design yeah yeah but and i really liked it when you know when you and louise came over to do those sessions here it was just i mean it was just really awesome i had such a great time doing it um and it was really fun to be able to play stuff and get like a really immediate feedback from Louise and you and, and kind of going, yeah, that, that thing's really working. That thing's not so much. Oh, maybe just try doing this. And all those all those changes can happen super, super quick because it's just like, oh, what, I've, what play it like this and turn the filter down on this bit. But and it's all those things can happen really, really fast. Um, but I think they can only happen fast if if you've got like an, inter like a, an instrument interface that allows you to do that. Um, and I really uh, I, I I bought the Dave Smith Prophet 6 when it came out in the keyboard version and then I moved to Spain for a bit and had to suitcase it all up so I sold it and bought the module version <clears throat> and I kind of liked the keyboard version the module version I literally just never really used and it's kind of stupid it's like it sounds exactly the same but because I couldn't play it it felt different um and I've had the same thing with the Electron Analog 4 that I use a lot. I've got the, I've got the, I've got the Analog Keys, which is like the keyboard version of the Analog 4 module. And at some stages, I've uh, I've owned both. And the one with the keys for me is just like a totally different instrument. Um, and there, so there, there. I think there's a bunch of stuff. There's, I think there's a bunch of different stuff going on there. I think with the Prophet 6 in particular, I think instrument designers really do lose sleep over where do you place the envelope control and where is the filter and what kind of instrument is this meant to be and like are you going to be playing with your left hand and tweaking with the right hand or are you going to be mm. playing with the right hand and tweaking with your left hand yeah. and so the and and like i don't it, it's not by chance that there's just this you know oh the knobs are over here and some are over there it's like the designers put them there because they feel like they're going to be useful in that place and and the whole thing creates an instrument, um, and I and I feel like with a lot of the modules, they're usually afterthoughts, and not quite the same level of thought has gone into that design process. And so, particularly if I'm like sitting here with my MIDI controller, but the modules over here, and I'm trying to, it's, it just doesn't work. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and the the feel you know, the feel of different keyboards i think is so important like the ms20 has got the crappiest keyboard on it in the history of keyboards and yet it makes you play particular things on it because those are the things that good you can play good on good on um, <laughs> yeah so you'll do certain things and it's not um it's not velocity sensitive because it's a cv keyboard and that's a whole other thing because mm -hmm. um small tangent so like velocity sensitive keyboards work because you press the key down and the key goes down to here and it measures the time that it takes for the key to go from here to here mm -hmm. and that amount of time is uh. like a linear relationship to how hard you have hit the key right? right but the problem is that then you press the key down and you get a note on here but your note off doesn't happen till it goes back up here huh.